You can't feel it. You can't see it. You may not have even heard of it. But a silent killer is in our midst. It is the leading risk of premature death in the world, well above smoking and infectious diseases. This killer is not lurking in a remote African jungle or in a shadowed downtown alley. It is here, in our backyards and living rooms. Can you tell me what the leading risk of death in the world is? I would say the leading risk of death in the world would be like AIDS or something, like Africa and all that kind of stuff. Hunger, poverty. Hunger and poverty? Yeah, probably with AIDS. AIDS? Uh, cancer. One quarter of Canadians are living with this condition, more than five million people, and many don't even know they have it. This killer often gives no warning of its approach, attacking first and asking questions later, when it's too late. What's hypertension? Hypertension. Uh, hypertension is when your heart's racing really fast or you're stressed out or something. Hyper... Hypertension? hypertension? Is that kind of like uh, when you like blow your knee or something like that or I have no idea. In a society where only the most shocking ideas make us sit up and take notice, we often miss what is right in front of us. Hypertension, high blood pressure, is the leading risk of death in the world, but most of us don't give our blood pressure a second thought. Did you know that hypertension can lead to strokes, heart attacks, kidney failure, dementia, and sexual dysfunction? Oh, I didn't know all of those. First two I did, but not all of that, no. High blood pressure can seem minor when compared with frightening diseases like multiple sclerosis or cancer, diseases which are obviously life-threatening or seriously debilitating. This is a wake-up call. Makes me think I better get my blood pressure checked. High blood pressure is the single greatest health risk facing people today. And there may be no warning signs. Hypertension's first symptom may be a stroke, heart attack, or death. Immediate treatment is as critical as with a cancer diagnosis, but many people diagnosed with high blood pressure ignore doctors' warnings and put themselves in harm's way. Nine out of 10 Canadians will get hypertension in their lifetimes. It can happen to you. Since the end of the Second World War, the North American lifestyle has changed drastically. Canadian society has become one of commuters and computers, leading to a population of sedentary adults and children. Despite sitting around all day, we are shockingly busy. Stress and long commutes, plus increased working hours, have left Canadians stressed out, with less time to make healthy choices, especially about diet and exercise. Most of the population is eating a diet with too many calories, too much fat, and too much sodium. Despite eating more than ever, we are not getting enough fruits, vegetables, or fiber. Half of Canadians visit fast food restaurants regularly, food packed with salt and saturated fat. It's not just the french fries that have become supersized. Half of the adult Canadian population is overweight or obese. Twenty-one percent of Canadians still smoke and one in five drink more than the maximum recommended amounts of 14 alcoholic drinks per week for men and nine drinks per week for women. It's no wonder lifestyle diseases like hypertension have become an epidemic. And no one is exempt. Ninety percent of Canadians will get hypertension in an average lifetime if they don't take preventative measures. So, while the forces may be cultural, the responsibility is individual. Your health is precious. It's time to take control. Hypertension is the medical term for high blood pressure. But what is high blood pressure and why is it so harmful? Simply put, blood pressure is the force or pressure in our blood vessels that allows the flow of blood, which delivers essential nutrients and oxygen from our heart and our lungs to the rest of our body. Over time, these blood vessels can actually thicken and stiffen, and this is often associated with an unhealthy lifestyle. So smoking, 
Decreased physical activity, a diet high in fat and salt can cause thickening of the lining of the blood vessels. And in fact, this is cholesterol and fatty plaques accumulating. This all adds up to hypertension. Over time, high blood pressure causes excess strain both on the heart and the blood vessels. This can cause damage to the blood vessels with rupture, clot formation, and blockages, which then leads to stroke, heart attack, dementia, and even sudden death. The strain on the heart and blood vessels happens deep inside the body and may not reveal itself through any outward signs or symptoms until it's too late. The only clue may be your blood pressure measurement. Your blood pressure numbers tell doctors what's happening in your vessels and how hard your heart is working to move blood through your body. The higher the numbers, the harder the heart has to work and the greater your health risks. Knowing your numbers is the first step to taking control of your health and it's very easy to do. It's really important that you know your blood pressure numbers. For example, a normal blood pressure is around 120 on 80. And in most people, the lower the better. Even in the normal range, blood pressure can increase over time. And the higher the numbers, the higher the risk for stroke and heart disease. The number of 140 on 90 or greater is considered high and needs some kind of intervention. Treatment usually begins with changes to a healthier lifestyle, followed in some cases by medications. If you have diabetes, your numbers need to be even lower. The number you need to remember is less than 130 on 80. Getting your blood pressure measured regularly and knowing your numbers is the first step to taking control of your health. But there are many other simple things you can do to prevent and manage high blood pressure. High blood pressure is serious, but you can prevent it and take steps to decrease your blood pressure if it's already high. Making changes to your lifestyle may seem like a daunting task at first, but the key lies in five simple steps. Step 1. Take control. Commit to your own health. You have the ability and the skills to make positive lifestyle changes. This is your life. Make the most of it. Step 2. Keep it simple. Deciding to lose 30 pounds, go vegetarian and train for a marathon all at once isn't necessary. Change one thing, like walking to work or adding a vegetable to every meal. Take one step at a time, stay on track, and you'll get there. Step 3. Take it slow. Change is a process that takes time. It takes 21 repetitions or more to create a new healthy habit, such as eating well or exercising regularly. Step 4. When you fall, get up. Nobody's perfect and everybody slips once in a while, but falling down doesn't mean staying down. Learn from these temporary setbacks and reaffirm your commitment to health. Step 5. Change your mind. Much of your success depends on mindset. Develop a positive attitude towards your progress. Repeat affirmations such as, I am healthy, vibrant, and enjoying my life. Now you feel ready for change, here are the critical changes to make your quality of life go up and your blood pressure go down. Transform your diet. You don't have to empty your fridge and start from scratch. Positive food choices are about choosing whole grains and low-fat dairy products adding fruits and vegetables, and decreasing salt and fat. Shake the salt habit. Dietary sodium is bad news when it comes to hypertension, and Canadians eat almost twice the amount of sodium that we need. Removing the salt shaker from your table is a great start, but it's the sodium in processed and restaurant foods that is the real problem. Foods high in sodium don't always taste salty. Some common breakfast cereals contain more salt than potato chips. Learn how to read food labels, paying attention to both the serving size and the amount of sodium contained in the product. Get active about your health. Give yourself permission to play for 30 to 60 minutes a day. 
Physical activity doesn't have to mean toiling away on a Stairmaster. Choose activities you enjoy and can do with people you love. And if you move it, you'll lose it. If you're overweight, losing about 10 pounds can lower your blood pressure. Butt out and put a cork in it. Smoking and drinking too much alcohol put your health at serious risk. Quit smoking and limit yourself to two or fewer drinks per day. Relax. Take time for yourself, even if it's 15 minutes a day. Making yourself a priority and managing your stress is critical to taking control of your blood pressure. Sue was a busy restaurant owner and mother of two boys when her diagnosis changed her life. I was shocked because I was working so hard and being so careful with everything, go for my medical checkup every year. It's almost like the ground slipped uh, under your feet. Her health issues are complicated by diabetes and a heart problem which led to emergency surgery. Sue took a proactive approach to her health. She exercises every day, splitting her workouts into shorter, more manageable chunks throughout the day. We do uh, yoga, and then we do uh, cycling, and then we have breakfast, and then I do treadmill, and uh, the daily routine after that. She also eats well, focusing on whole grains, low-fat dairy, and fresh fruits and vegetables. But much of Sue's success is in her attitude. It's very important to be positive. It's not even for your own sake, for everybody's sake. Because if I fall sick, everybody has a problem, right? They, their life gets uh, topsy-turvy because somebody has to take me, somebody has to look after me. Grandchildren want to be picked up or they want to uh, go swimming with you or they want to go for a walk with you. And if you're sick and if you're lame and all that, how can you do that? You have to look after yourself in order to appreciate everything. Alan has a history of high blood pressure in his family. Yes, that was the way the cards were dealt, and some of my family members have hypertension, so I guess it's hereditary in my part. His doctor has prescribed several medications to help manage his hypertension. I think the most important factor is to do what your doctor tells you. You have to... Um, take your medications on a regular basis. He also uses a home blood pressure monitor to track changes in his blood pressure between doctor's visits. I think it's critical that you monitor your own blood pressure. It gives the doctor a better idea what's happening. A fitness celebrity, Hal Johnson was one of the most unlikely people to develop hypertension. I was first diagnosed with hypertension when I was 19 years old when I was uh, doing a routine medical exam for Team Canada and they couldn't figure out why I had hypertension because I was in good shape, I exercised, I ate properly, but they said you've got hypertension, you've got to take medication for it. So I've been taking medication since I was, since I was 19, uh, which is a long time and has kept it under control since then and I think it's really important for everyone to take their medication and keep it under control. Hypertension can happen to anybody, and most of us aren't national-level athletes like Hal Johnson. Taking a long-term approach to health is important. Making positive lifestyle changes now may mean avoiding serious problems in the future. You only go on medications if you feel sick. False. High blood pressure is the silent killer. You could feel great and still be at risk. No one likes taking pills, but these medications are essential for lowering your blood pressure and preventing stroke and heart attack. I should continue to get checked, even if I'm following my treatment plan. True. Because high blood pressure may have no symptoms, regular screening is important, even if you're eating right, exercising, and taking your medications. You can get your blood pressure tested by health professionals such as doctors, nurses, or pharmacists, or purchase a home blood pressure device to monitor yourself. My father has high blood pressure. This means I'm more at risk, right? True. Hypertension can be caused by lifestyle choices, but there are also hereditary factors. 
If a family member has hypertension, it is critical you measure your blood pressure regularly and take preventative measures such as diet and exercise. If I start exercising, I won't have to change my diet. False. The average Canadian consumes almost double the recommended sodium. Chances are you are eating too much salt. Sodium has a direct impact on blood pressure and is a major risk factor in hypertension. Add more fruits and vegetables to your diet. Choose low-fat dairy products, whole grains and foods high in fiber. Decrease your salt and fat intake. Making lifestyle changes can decrease your blood pressure the same amount as taking one medication. True. Positive lifestyle change is an essential and incredibly beneficial part of both prevention and management of hypertension. High blood pressure is a serious but very treatable condition. Caught early enough, strategies such as decreasing dietary sodium, losing weight and exercising can reduce your chances of getting hypertension and help you live a long, healthy life. Get your blood pressure checked today and know your numbers. For more detailed information about high blood pressure, talk to your doctor or visit www.hypertension.ca.